one, two, three, go. Hello everyone. In today's question, we are going to look at how you make your application scalable for large traffic. And when we say large traffic, think of an event where you are expecting uh, some large amount of traffic. Maybe you are promoting some product or going live with a brand new product where you are expected to have a considerable amount of traffic or think of uh, Black Friday for retail or Christmas time when you are expecting some large volume and you do want your users to do the function right whether it's uh, reviewing your product buying the product selling the product whatever your website has to offer and that is what uh, we want to review here for a typical three tier application how do you make your application scalable for a larger traffic so the users would not see a 404 error okay let's get started So in this scenario, uh, what we are looking at is a, a typical three-tier architecture. And the reason we say here three-tier architecture is primarily this is a web application is our assumption. And uh, the tier one, uh, we are calling it as a presentation layer where you as an application owner are uh, showing your product uh, whether it's images, content, uh, videos, uh, whatever it is. So it's typically a presentation layer from a OSI layer point of view. Uh, the second tier is where you are trying to do your business logic. So let's say if you are an e-commerce application and uh, you are displaying a product as a part of a presentation layer, but when user is adding that product into a cart, uh, you may want to run some business logic when that user is adding that product into a cart. That business logic could be check the product uh, total count in your inventory before that user is allowed to purchase it, right? So that might be your business logic and that's your application server typically. And you can have an Apache Tomcat or IBM WebSphere or WebLogic or any of the other uh, web application to your uh, web, uh, web application servers you can you can launch here and run through it and the third tier is considered as a database tier so when that user is adding that item in a cart you want to store that information in a database so that in case something happens to your application server let's say your application server died for whatever reason you want to stay you want to maintain that state of that card the, the user card and you typically maintain that state in your databases so that's how three tier architecture is being uh, considered now if you are running on uh, in this example we are looking at aws uh, but particularly when you have a large amount of user are expected you want to run this applications in some sort of a load balanced and fault tolerant mode. And when we say load balance and fault tolerant, uh, let's, let's uh, look at fault tolerant first. Uh, in situation where in this scenario of what we are calling it as availability zone one and availability zone two. So think of this as a two distinct different data centers from a physical premises point of view and what if this data center one goes down completely then you have a data center two to fail over to and that is what the concept of ability zone is where you have a fail, uh, failure at one layer and you can fail it over to the second uh, availability zone but beyond that uh, that's your fault tolerant at a data center layer uh, also what you want to do is you want to achieve some sort of a high availability so in this scenario for our public subnet, we have uh, in the public subnet as a presentation tier, we have Apache web servers. And uh, it's not just one web server, uh, it's a multiple EC2 host or multiple virtual machines we are running as a part of Apache web server. And what we are doing is, is we are uh, infusing something called auto scaling group. So 
what auto scaling group does is uh, if a vm dies for whatever reason or a vm becomes saturated from a resource point of view uh, then auto scaling group uh, based on the logic what we may have defined in our auto scaling parameters it will launch additional servers for us and as more servers are being launched more users are being served but to serve that user and and to maintain that uh, flexibility of adding and removing servers uh, we are infusing something called application load balancer so what happens is when the user is connecting to a website called pet store for example petstore.com that user is connected to a something called route 53 which is uh, aws's dns service uh, and that's uh, petstore.com has an uh, dns record created in the route 53 which has uh, alias record or a record as we call it uh, applied to your application load balancer and your load balancer is distributing traffic uh, across multiple web servers and in this scenario since we are uh, following two availability zone application load balancer can divert the traffic on the left on the az1 or on the right on az2 depends on the rule what we define in our application load balancer plus the auto scaling group is uh, spinning up more servers or reducing the servers as it progress from a utilization point of view so that's on tier 1 on the public subnet uh, what happens at tier 2 or the second tier uh, we launch this tomcat application server it's just just an example we are launching this tomcat application server in subnet 2 which is on the private subnet not on the public subnet but a private subnet and again we are launching this app servers as a part of auto scaling group and again similar to what we saw in the apache web server uh, when a certain utilization number hits let's say my app server is running beyond 70% uh, cpu utilization or memory utilization i instruct the auto scaling group to launch two more app servers so that's what happens behind the scene where more app servers are being added and they are being registered into this application load balancer so this app load balancer at a subnet public subnet is different than the app load balancer at a private subnet and technically speaking uh, when these servers are being registered and when those servers are up and running Uh, app load balancer will start distributing traffic to those additional application server so this way we are able to sustain as the more traffic more users are coming in uh, whether it's from the uh, internal users or external users uh, first at a web server tier level and then at a application server tier level so that's in our tier 2 we are still uh, something we have on the tier 2 something called cash layer So what we are doing at a caching layer uh, is we are caching certain database transactions. So there might be many requests which is easily can be served without reaching to the database. So what App Server does is it reaches out to the caching layer or cache server, Redis or any Elastic Cache layer, and it re- uh, receives or at least uh, feed or fetch the data from the cache layer to your end user. now you may say okay what if the cache is invalidated then yes if if something which is not exist in a cache or something which is not current in a cache then this app server instead of fetching from the cache it reaches out to the sql server database in this case i have my sql as a database but it can be any of your uh, sql like database or it can be a no sql database as well so that's your tier 3 So when we say three tier architecture the web server level application server level and the third tier as a database server uh, what we are doing in addition to here uh, three tier architecture is uh, we have added something called uh, a mysql replica on the second availability zone so what it allows us to do is uh, any read request so there in a typical websites uh, instead of the write operations there are many read operations happens typically it's an 80 20 rule where 80% of your request are read request so one way you can fulfill your read request is via caching layer 
where you allow that cache to be fulfilled your read request. The other would be uh, allowing your read replica uh, to fetch the data to your application server whenever they need. So this is how typically a three-tier architecture get played out. Uh, something to note, uh, when we are looking at a launching large event, like you need uh, 10,000 requests a second, what you can ask AWS to do is you can ask them to pre-warm your load balancer. Pre-warming is something AWS can do for you based on the event you may have upcoming. Also something you can do is within the auto scale group, there is something called scheduled scaling. So if you know that your, your users are going to come in at 8 a.m. sharp, then you can schedule your server to scale at 7.45. You want to be prepared for 8 o'clock, right? So you scale your uh, auto scale group right around uh, your schedule time. Also, one another thing you can do is you can reduce your EC2 image size. In this scenario, your application server may have a lot of other libraries or binaries which you may or may not need. So if you think that you can reduce the overall size of your EC2 image or your virtual machine image, then you should do that. That way your image size would get reduced and that will allow you to launch your application server or even web server faster when you have the real user uh, coming up. And another approach which is in a long term is uh, to con to containerize your application or uh, apply some sort of a serverless mechanism if you want to. But these are some of the mechanism you can apply for your typical three-tier architecture. And hope this helps you understand how three-tier architecture would work and how you can scale uh, for a particular event you may have coming up uh, running into uh, with AWS. Thank you. Have a nice day.